Jacques Cartier, October 3, 1535, The Second Voyage. And here within the countryside is situated and sits the said town of Hochelaga, near and joining an enfolding mountain. The said town is all in a circle, enclosed in, and in this town there is only one door and entrance. There are within this town roughly 50 longhouses. After exiting the said town, we were guided by several men and women from that place up upon the mountain that we named Mont Royal. In the chalet, two paintings illustrate Cartier's accounts of his visit to the village of Hochelaga. Here, Paul-Émile Bordua reproduces a drawing from 1556 by Giacomo Gastaldi, the most renowned cartographer of 16th century Italy. The name given by Cartier to the mountain, Mont Royal, is assigned in Italian by Gastaldi as Monte Real, which later gave Mont Real its name. The exact location of the village, certainly close to the mountain, remains to this day subject to speculation. Giacomo Gastaldi drafted his drawing based upon Jacques Cartier's accounts. Paul-Émile Bordua reworked and simplified his design. The central circular motive dominates, presenting a ground-level plan of the Amoridian village, laid out within a fortress. Bordua also reproduces figures to animate the foreground, showing a meeting between two chiefs. He enhances his painting with strong colors while respecting the unifying green and brown hues that characterize his series of maps to decorate the chalet. Again, in his chronicle, Jacques Cartier relates that after visiting the village of Hochelaga, the aboriginals led him up a mountain. Alfred Faniel reconstructs the scene directly from Jacques Cartier's narrative. As far as we could see, the river was great, wide, and spacious, heading to the southwest, passing close by three picturesque round mountains. In this autumnal setting, Cartier points his finger in the direction of the St. Lawrence River, or perhaps towards the Lachine Rapids, which impeded his progress. The painter chooses to confine Cartier and his companions to the left side of the painting to make way for a vast, open space, an archetypal vision of an unpopulated, limitless America. In the background, we can recognize the Monteregian hills, as they can still be viewed today from the Belvedere.